Morning all, <clears throat> and welcome to today's Sunday Q&A, which, if it looks slightly different, is because I'm currently filming it on the Osmo Action 1, which is, I've got two cameras when I do these videos. I've got the Osmo Pocket, which is the one with a gimbal, which follows your head, which makes sure I've got a mini camera crew on board, and the Osmo Action, because my phone has now decided to tell me that the camera doesn't work. So I'm, I'm going to give one a new, I'm going to give a new phone a bash. I'm going to try these, the Samsung, was it, A14 5G, uh, basically, because I've been watching the videos, and as far as I can work out, it does pretty much everything I need it for, to, from a phone. It's just like a tenth of the price. I've always had these super duper top of the range S21 Ultra Super Fantastico or the, um, the Zen Fold 3, and the damn things don't seem to last more than 18 months anyway, so I'm gonna, I've got that coming today. I'll give it a bash. I'll probably do a video on it. I doubt anybody will watch it. There's lots of people that do this kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, without further ado, um, Sunday Q&A. Here we go. So, um, oh, why is that on there? See, now, you see, I'm doing it on this. And for some reason, the screen's turned off. Oh, there you go. You touch it. There you go. Because it can. Cause I need the, uh, the numbers so I can do the timestamp. And the timestamp there, 122. Last week's mistakes. Oh no, before we go, um, introduction. Andy Darwin says, um, he says, you're looking for jobs on the way home. I thought you worked for a firm now. I do, Andy. I have got a job. I work for Transport IT. And my job is to drive the lorry and also to plan the lorries. We've got three lorries on the fleet. Um, Andy's in the Arctic, Mick is in the 26 tonne, and I'm in the 18 tonne. So what I have to do, I've got a, oh, my bag's not here. I've got a diary, a day planner diary, and what I do is I write jobs in, and then I sort of, our jobs, which we'll come to, because we're gonna, we've got to talk about backloads in a bit. Um, and then I, I set them all up, and I plan a day, and then everybody comes along and changes it. <laughs> So then I cross it all out and I plan it again. But, you know, we're, we're working out a system. It's, it's, it's actually working much better than what I used to do, which is just wait to get the jobs. Um, but we're working out on the day. That screen's gone off again there. Is it coming back on? Oh, for crying out loud. Entertaining TV. We might even have to put this video together. I might have to edit this one when it goes in the machine. So, you know what, I'm going to, once again, guys, I'm going to give up on the timestamps. I'm ever so sorry. Um, we just, <laughs> I'll get a new phone this week. We'll see if we can sort it out with that. So anyway, last week's mistakes. Um, I can't do a timestamp, so I can't get rid of that. Last week's mistake, Clive Littlewood and Godzilla, not so much a mistake, uh, turns around and says, IMO stands for In My Opinion. Thank you very much. I'll consider myself educated. Everything is basically, in my opinion, or, uh, with the ones on my videos, which is, as I said all the way, is um, wrong or at least um, largely inaccurate. <laughs> and Dale Steele says, is it 100 River Niles? Because I managed to put the video up as 100 Niles instead of 100 Miles. Um, and Nick, the photographer, pointed that one out to me. Nick, I will catch up on your videos again. I know I'm falling behind, so, but um, I'll get on to it. So. Um, right, so... The two videos this week, as they tend to be, one life on the road, one chatting nonsense, uh, was about backloads. And now it's the big debate about the CX, is it a backload platform, isn't it a backload platform? Um, uh, Patrick Bonner, he says, load boards are a race to the bottom. And he says, the question mark. Basically by that, what we're saying is, you're, it's like a Dutch auction, you kind of... Everyone says, I'll do it for this. And then another guy says, I'll do it cheaper. And then another guy says, I'll do it cheaper. And another guy says, I'll do it cheaper. And then before you know it, you're racing to get to like the bottom price. That's kind of what they mean by that. Uh, Dale Steele said, the CX isn't a backload platform. Majority of jobs are hot, hot shots. Stupid drivers are underbidding to make it backload rates. And it's fair enough. I mean, if a job is listed as a hot shot, then, but then I always think that's very misleading because I've had seen jobs that are listed as a, as a hot shot, and then it says in the notes, can be delivered any time between now and Wednesday. And I've seen jobs that are delivered, uh, that are um, back, that are listed as backloads, and it says collection between 9 and 10 must be delivered by 12. And you're like, that ain't a backload, is it? To me, a backload is, well, you pick it up now, we're not in a rush for it, bring it back when you're ready type thing, as long as it gets back here by the end of the week. That, to me, is the difference between a backload and a hot shot. And I remember when back in the day when I did comment with the CX, they were going to try and remove this stuff, but they haven't, so there you go. Um, as Ian says, um, every job should be priced the same regardless. 
uh, it, whether it gets you home or not, or why you would need, or why would you need to do it cheap, especially when you're looking for another job from home out to wherever that might suit someone else that wants to get home. Sounds like everyone is more interested in getting home than taking money. I think a lot of us would prefer a platform where we didn't have to bid. I think we'd prefer a platform where this is the job, this is how much it pays. But that's not the way it's set up. And I don't pass comment on what should and shouldn't be happening. I just tend to pass comment on what is, if you know what I mean. Uh, it, would, it would be much easier for me, I'd prefer it. But then I suppose an argument can be made that if it says job pays, what is it, first come, first served? I suppose it is. But then what is it, job pays, or it might be job pays £200, and then 15 people will put bids on, and then it'll be like, well, I'll see which one's the closest and which one's got the best feedback. That could work, I suppose. But it's not the way it works. So we have to deal with the way it works. Um, as Paul Stanwick says, he said, in 1978, I was a motorcycle courier. Jobs were charged at 50p per mile, half fare back for the weight in return. I can't remember what waiting time was per hour, but I had my money I had money in my pockets come Friday. 50p in 1978 is now worth £3.59. I drive a London cab. The meter goes at, or maybe just under £4 a mile. I make a small profit, but that's all. I do wonder how you all make a profit running vans and trucks. This isn't a criticism, just a reflection of a grumpy old git who's disillusioned and saddened by the working person's progress in this country. Be lucky, one and all. Well, first of all, Paul, well done you for getting the knowledge. I got, I got, I, I think I got up to, I did on, up to about 180 runs. Uh, I got quite a few points in before I just realised I was going to run out of money and time before I could make it off. But my mate Dave is a cab driver and he does it. And fair play to you. Uh, I totally agree with what you. I mean, like I say, cab driver. It used to be you'd get. You'd, it was a hell of an exam. It is a very, very difficult exam to pass. It's like it's like a degree. It takes three years to do it to get your green badge right. But it was literally back in I don't know the eighties. Licence to print money. You'd literally you you pull up in your cab. Someone would get out, and as they open the door, someone would get on the other side, and you just running, running, running all the time. Now, with the advent of things like Uber, and you know, and soon, of course, the potential of driverless cars. We've got domain name guy on that one. He's our guy for that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get any easier for any of us, mate. We just do the best we can to survive, don't we? So, but thanks for your input. Uh, Shane Hardy says regarding the backload thing, he says it's a near impossible question. Like you say, Pete, it's the fact that. It's the fact there are too many factors to consider. And, yeah, I think Dale Steele goes on to that. Uh, no, sorry, Godzilla's goes on. We'll do something about that one. But before that, um, user, and then it's a droid's name, CJ2BI, um, he says, every single driver has different expenses, mortgage, kids, finance, whatever. It's completely impossible to tell the driver what to charge. One might need a grand a week. The next one might need 300. Surely every, every driver knows his weekly, monthly costs. I would say you kind of have to base it on the cost, what the job costs you to do, and then put a profit on top of that, a reasonable profit. But the problem is, like I say, that's only if you base it on one job. And at the moment, the way it is working for us is we have got stuff going out of our warehouses. Um, Transport IT Transports for a firm called OH Logistics. And we have got stuff going out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right, Monday, you're collecting reels, you're collecting solar panels, and for those jobs, we will be charging, not over the top, a reasonable rate. And if these jobs, like, I have ones going up to Scotland quite a lot every Wednesday. If anyone's got a job coming back from Glasgow on a regular basis on a Thursday, please let me know, because it would not make my life easier. Or the Scotland there at the moment, I'm booking them out of Newcastle. There's nothing comes, but it's very, very difficult. I did get one out of Falkirk, and don't get me wrong, it went for very, very, very cheap money. But the other option is driving 200 miles down to Newcastle or Preston, pick the job up there and then go the rest of the way. So you kind of think, well, it's driving 200 dead miles to pick the job up because that's all there is. So it's, it's, it's involved. Um, what was going on with this one? Yeah, so, yeah, so we are back, they are backloads to us. It's like we need to get, get Dan, Dan, my boss turns around and says, get something in that's coming back that sort of cover the diesel and cover the, cover the costs so that he's not driving back empty and we're happy. We make the money on the first job, just make sure it doesn't cost you money to come back. Otherwise, all the money we make on the first job, if he comes back empty, you lose it. So that's where we're at with that one. But, um, and Godzilla's finally, on this note, says, um, he says, how much? This is what I drink. 
is it depends on the vehicle, depends on the time of day, depends on the location, depends on the destination, depends on the type of load. There isn't a blanket answer as everything is different. It's a game of chess. You work out the piece that's likely to get you the job and you'll be the most, in and you'll be the most interested to do. With experience comes the answer and you can't define every bit of experience needed. Quote and see what happens. If you're super busy, then you ain't earning a wage. If there's no takers, you're too expensive. And that's basically it in a nutshell. The one thing that I will stick with, and I said it on the video, what you want for the job is as much as you can possibly get. And I still ring them. If it's the one I'm not fussed about, I equate it. I think, okay, that's the money. If it comes in, we'll do it. If it's one I really want, and you, you go, that's the one, that's the one. I'm in Norwich, and it's picking up 10 miles away, and it's going back to St. Neots. Oh, that's the one. Then I ring them, and I go, oh, I want this job. I'm, I'm quite blatant about it sometimes. I want this job. Please give me this job. This job will take me home. And even though it always says, e quotes only, a lot of people were very happy to talk to you, and some of them will go, well, you know, they've quoted online, but you phoned, so I'll give it to you. And I kind of think, but if you want to encourage people not to ring, wouldn't you give it to the person that hasn't rung? But I think because they talk to you and you kind of sound competent, which I'll never get me in around, um, they go, well, he seems to know what he's doing. He, 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 sounds like, he sounds like he's a reasonable person. So there you go. So, um, and Chili says, and Chili, I haven't forgotten about the fact I've got to do a video on strapping down and loading the Luton van. I will get around to it once I get in the Luton van. Uh, if I'm ever in the Luton van. He says, how much should a Luton van job go for per mile? Um, which again, I'm, um, I would say around about 150, I think. And don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't book the van jobs. I think it should be about 150, Godzilla's kind of agrees. Anyone out there, I would say as a general rule of thumb, I think that's about the right money in the Luton van right now. But I'm kind of no, I'm not really the expert in the Luton van, so I'm not really the expert in anything, in fact. Which is why instead, I'm just doing So this week's video, the other one, the Life on the Road video, uh, that was about entry into John Lewis. Um, Dr. Benny Boom Boombats says, Kin John Barstool Lewis. I go there sometimes. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> but thank you for commenting anyway. Uh, the nefarious Steve Campbell says, yeah, he said, mine is, oh yeah, because I've got the thing with the lorry where I've got diesel on one side and I've got AdBlue on the other. So if you want to put in and you want to sort of fill up, unless you put it in one of those ones where there is only enough space for one truck, and there's a pump on one side and a pump on the other side, you can go, well, I need pump number 16 and add blue pump number 27. You have to either move the truck around or you have to make a separate stop for add blue. It's tedious. He said, yeah, mine's the same. It's annoying queuing for diesel and then queuing, going back and queuing for add blue. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Um, we're supposed to have an IBC at the um, yard, but it's kind of run out at the moment. Um, W12 Super says, you should change the voice on waves to English USJ. You get street names. Turn right into Station Road. Yeah, but then I've got to listen to a voice of a lady in American, and I'd rather listen to a voice of a lady in English. Just personal preference. Nothing against Americans. Just would rather have an English person talk to me. And I quite like the voice of whoever I've got at the moment. Susan or Michael or Barry or something. It's a girl. Um, and Godzilla, again, he said sort of, he said on Ashby, because I was at Ashby de la Zouche. He said, nice high street, not a lot going on. I pass it almost daily. I used to live just a few miles away with it um, being our local source of shops. Ignore the services on the A45 and swing past into local Tesco's at £1.46 per litre rather than 180 at the services. That's why you need a fuel card. Um, uh, if Pete had gone over the lights, there's a chippy a few yards now. Uh, uh, yeah. And then I think there's some more stuff about trucks. But I am going to call it oh, a, couple, a couple of bits from the wise guys. Well, I've, got, I've got to edit this together, haven't I? Um, uh, Gandeep Singh says, do you have to get Taco Master for the DigiView thing? Because I used to have this thing for downloading the heads, and it's DigiView. It's really handy. It would read the cards, and it would read the heads. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. No, I think they work with all of them. Um, yeah, it's just, just what it does is it gathers the data off the cards, and it gathers the data off of... Um, the taco heads, and then you can plug it into any system you like. I think they're all pretty much multi-purpose. If I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will let me know, but I'm pretty sure they are. Um, and Jamie the Highlander says, 303, that's a Bobby Brilliant, which must be to do with something I did in a video, and once again, I haven't got a clue. So that's today's Q&A. So I'm going to chop it together with this thing. 
Um, and then I'm going to um, get a new phone today, program it all up, and hopefully it'll be okay and we'll be doing it from that one. Also, before I go, um, I'd like to say a load of you made comments on Parking Eye. Now, I've got these down on a separate piece of paper here. I haven't read them out of today's Q&A because I want to start a separate kind of strand with this one. Because, you know, like sometimes I think people comment, a lot of the time I get comments on, you know, response to like the, the um, speed awareness course. And I think this is something that would bother a lot of people. And I think if we can get like a forum discussion going, we might actually sort of get a little bit more concrete on it. But thank you very much for everyone who commented. I haven't forgotten it. It will go out as a separate video. Um, and we'll see where we go with it. And hopefully it will help people, which is kind of what we're trying to do, myself included. I've got a ticket for a red route. Dan said, you've got a ticket on a Holloway Road. And I was in a loading bay. I said, the only time I've been on a Holloway Road was when I was in a loading bay and I got a parking ticket. And now apparently I've got a red route ticket. I've got to check it out. In the meantime, you don't want these tickets because they drain from you when you are trying to take care, take money. <laughs>